this is Abina at Cross Keys Crafts. Tonight I've got my gel plate out because I bought some new acrylic paints from Lavinia Stamps. I only got three colours. I've got loads of acrylic paints in my stash. But apparently these have got a different textures to anything else on the market. So they're very good for gel printing. And that's why I bought these. So I just got the snow white, the jet black and the soft cyan. And I thought I'll have a little play tonight. I've granted myself half an hour to play with this. So I'm hoping I get a few projects done. Or if not, maybe just a few backgrounds that I can turn into cards tomorrow. After that, I need to tidy my craft room a little bit. So... It's been a while since I've done some gel printing. I've done it with um, the Elements inks, but it's been a while since I've done it with um, acrylic paints. So I hope I can remind myself how to, how to do it. I have watched a few videos on the Lavinia Stamps website or um, YouTube channel, I should say. Also on the Facebook page, they um, post videos. So I've got a bit of background here. But I think I just delve right into this. And I have got on the side here uh, one of my stencils I would like to use. I'll link to that below. I can't remember the name. One thing that is super important, I say this here now, all the materials you work with, with these acrylic paints, this is different when you use the element inks, you have to wash these straight away or at least soak them. I will, as soon as I've used this and switched the camera off, I will quickly um, soak this in the sink. I don't have a tray here on my desk. If you're further away from your sink, um, best is to have a tray with water, at least soak it until you get the chance to properly wash it. So, um, I'm not even sure which was colour I want to start with. Maybe do a mix of the black and the cyan. And you don't need a lot. This is actually quite watery. I don't know if you need to shake them beforehand. You probably do. Yeah, that's a bit thicker. So this might actually be already too much. So I just get a bit of tissue paper and I take a bit of this off. So I've taken the bit off and giving this one a shake. Really don't need a lot. So and I've got my brayer here and I'm just going to spread this out. That is definitely too much there. I've got a bit of scrap paper here on the side. So whatever I think I don't need, I can just roll this off. And the trick to spreading this out is to lift the brayer off. I'm not an expert at this, by the way, just in case you're wondering. It's because otherwise you end up with the same pattern all over. So let me just show you this here. Let me lift it up a little bit. Oops. So you get an idea. I know this has got a chalky finish and it does say that on the packaging. So it's different from my more glossy um, acrylic paint. So I'm just placing this on there. And I've got a fairly thin cardstock here. It's like a thicker paper. You can also use just some copy paper. But I had this handy, so I'm just placing this down and then I'm pressing with my hand all over. Apologies as usual for my camera wobbling. I would love to find a, a setup where I don't have to attach my um, camera holder or phone holder to the table. Um, maybe one day I can figure that out. So I'm just... Making sure you can also use your brayer to press it down, but then you might not get into all the areas of the stencil, so it's probably best to use that. So, and if I lift it up now, oh, yeah, that is lovely. Can you see? And I like the mix of the black and the cyan there. So, I'm taking this off now. As I said, I'm switching the camera off and just showing you that there, and then I quickly soak this. So I've soaked my stencil. With this one here, I will leave this to dry for a moment and then I will use a different colour on top to lift this off again. But in the meantime, I will cut some shapes. On one of Tracy Dutton's videos, she used the 
um, masks and they ship them fish masks that you can buy from Lavinia. I don't have those, so I'm just cutting my own, um, just from the same thing, cardstock, I think, and to place them on here. I quickly do this off camera. So, this took me about two minutes. I gathered after I had drawn all three that I just needed to cut out one and use it as a template for the others. So, um, I had to gather my brain. I think there are different ways of using it. What you need to do to lift this ink off again is just to put another layer of paint on the top. So, I'm just going to, I forgot to shake that, going to use the white. Well, this is enough. So I'm just using my brayer again, lifting it up. I might need a little bit more, but you want it to be fairly thin. I'm also not sure how quick this dries. I think I'll put another layer on top just to be on the safe side. With jelly printing, um, it's not an exact science. Um, it is really just a question of having a play and enjoying it and working with whatever results you get. So I'm placing my fish on top. It doesn't matter which round they go. Just that one there, that one that way around, and that one that way around. And now I'm placing my fresh piece of cardstock on top and again taking a print by really pressing and rubbing really hard on this, making sure I go to all the edges there so when I think I've pressed it down everywhere I can lift this off now it's a bit on the edges, I could have pressed it down a little bit more. Maybe because I used the heavier cardstock, I wasn't quite sure how much the paper would stick. Let me just peel this off. And you see I've got a few edges there, but I still think this is quite cool. This one gets a bit lost there, but I'll work with that afterwards. So now... I can peel these off and either they have stuck, oh yeah, the ink stuck to those as well. So I can reuse those. You see, they've got a pattern as well. I might make a feature out of that on the other card. I'll have a think about that. So I'll just peel those off. I think they're quite cool actually. So, um, there are different ways of how to clean um, this up. I can just use some scrap paper, see if that lifts anything off. Usually that is the case, but no, this has dried too much already. So I'll have to have a look how I get rid of that. Sometimes you can just use some more paint. As I said, I don't have much experience. That has dried as well a little bit. So I might have to come in with some water. Let me just figure that out off camera and then I'll let you know how I did it. So I managed to get most of the paint off by putting another layer of paint on top and then taking my scrap paper and just um, rubbing all over it and taking it off. I don't mind that there is some residue because I'm going to work with the fish shapes anyway. I would like to use this piece here, but I would like these fish to be orange. So I'm not sure how I will edit this video. I filmed a bit of footage and then I stopped filming because my next step that I had planned was a total fail. So I ditched the um, gel plate, well if I say ditched, I cleaned it, I packed it away um, because my idea to stamp these fish 
um, on the gel plate, didn't work at all, I didn't pick up the ink, the first print, I ruined that a little bit. But um, when I was just about to dismiss the whole session here, I thought I can just create my own stamp and rather than using the gel plate, I can just use my VersaFine Clear to stamp these fish in orange as I had planned. So I picked these out of the bin. Uh, these are my original templates and I've cut myself one in just kids craft foam. I stuck this on an acrylic block with some, um, just some clear tape and yeah, I hope this, it doesn't matter that it's a bit thicker there and now I can use this as a stamp to fill this in. So as normal, I'm just using my VersaFine Clear. This is the summertime, the lovely orange. And it won't be perfect because it's kids craft foam, but I don't want this to be perfect because I've got the rough texture there anyway. The only thing I don't want is too much of, uh, you know, streaks from this side of the ink pad. So I'm just trying to blend that out a little bit. If you wanted to, you could use a brayer on that. I might actually do that and just get my smaller brayer out. Because I've got a really thin one. Just to make sure I don't have streaks there. Could give it a try on the side, but if you know me, I'm just going straight in. So placing this approximately where it is obviously this is just one fish they weren't all the same size but hopefully this will work just giving that a bit of pressure and also let it seep into the cardstock and there we go got a bit of a excess there in the middle where it didn't where it didn't have enough ink or where I didn't put enough pressure on it doesn't matter so I can actually just use the X's on the brayer here to start with and see if that is enough I could if I wanted to I might do that actually in a second layer go in with a different colour and see if I can stamp over that so just being mindful that I've got a bit of ink on my hands so I'm placing that about here. It might be just the area between the clear tape there. I'll find out now. I could put a silicon mat underneath, give it a bit more pressure. And as always, apologies again for the camera wobbling. Yeah, it's the same area. So it's probably that because I've got the clear tape there so for my next one I will just put a little silicon mat underneath to see if I get better pressure and then I'll show you how we can put a bit of variation on color there yes with my silicon mat underneath this is just a cut up kitchen mat or baking mat uh, the stamping was definitely better so that's a little tip there for you so for the second layer I'm let me just move this a little bit out of the way I've just got another stencil here and I'm going to apply the ink over this stencil onto the fish and I'm just using some tulip red I think that could look really nice so I'm just using my brayer again you could obviously use a blending brush try not to shift the stencil too much Very interesting. Well, tonight this is just a little play. So I'm just trying to get over where I was before. Again, pressing this down thoroughly. Yep, there you go. Our goldfish has got a lovely pattern there. I will definitely um, 
try to disguise that a little bit probably just with my blending brush just trying to go in there although some goldfish have got white in them so I'm going to repeat this step off camera quickly and yeah I think they definitely need some eyes and I will cut this to size I might just finish this quickly off camera I think I've exceeded my half hour playtime already and just show you the finished card So, my card is finished. Um, I thought at one point I was messing it up again. Because what I did was, um, first of all, I used my little dauber to fill in those um, areas here. I just dabbed a little bit on there and that was fine. But then I thought, you know, I should really add a fin. And I cut another piece from my foam and I stamped on there and I didn't like it at all. I used the, I didn't use the VersaFine. I used the russet orange and I thought it was really too dark. Then I decided now that I've done the um, finsy on the side I should really have a fin on the top so I googled uh, goldfish and I mean they have completely different um, fins in the back as well. Do you call them fins? Never mind but I just decided to have one on the top and I cut a piece of foam um, for this one, actually, I had to turn it round, so that's the other side, just to make it go in the right direction. And it wasn't really coming together. I didn't like that bit, but glitter saves everything. So I got my Artistro paint marker pen out. These are the glittery ones, and I just added a few strokes on the top there and on there, and immediately that rescued the look of the fins. And I'm really pleased with that. Then I used my white Posca pen to draw on the eyes and then went in with my black gel pen to put in the black. I was also contemplating maybe just using my drops for the eye that would have worked as well and I gave them all a lovely smile. And yeah I'm really pleased with this now. I, f I really like how it came together Although um, halfway through my crafting session, this looked a bit like a nightmare. So yeah, um, I think this is really cool. I'm not adding a sentiment. First of all, there is not a lot of space for it. If I had to at one point, I could maybe squeeze something there. You know, like a best wishes or if I needed a thank you card. Oh, by the way, the cardstock, I had this sort of peach coloured cardstock. It's a ready-made card with a matching envelope. And I thought with that orange, that worked really nicely. So I just cut this uh, to size. This is a five by seven card. And yeah, I think this is really nice now. Not what I had envisioned when I first started off. But yes, yeah, sometimes these lucky um, accidents happen and you end up with a card that you're really pleased with. Sometimes it doesn't end well, but then again, it's only paper, so it could go in the bin as well if you don't like what you're producing. But yeah, if you like this card as much as I do, you might want to give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of what I'm creating, you might want to subscribe to my channel. I'd be very happy about that. And I'll see you soon with another video.